Hey there, neighbors and naysayers. This is Clint Finney again for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council update. Yeah, I was up in the field tonight, and I apologize, I'm breathing a little heavy, but I had to walk up the hill. Um, and just had a thought about this trampling forage idea. Um, and this is some more of the pastures that I've been in. And maybe we're going to walk through and take a look at what we've done, and uh, maybe talk about some other thoughts. I apologize if I had the camera half off my face. I'm new at this. So let's get started. Kind of a good place to start. Fescue, clover, and Scarlet the guard dog is going to get in the picture and probably lick the screen. Um, this is where I just put the sheep into. This field is part of the long field above where we've had the pasture walks. 14 acres, 526 feet wide, split into two paddocks, 253 feet wide apiece, 32 foot posts on center, and that's how we divide up our paddock divisions coming up the fence. I give them four posts or five posts. Today it's six posts up the hill, but this is what we're moving them into, and I don't know whether I'm going backwards or forwards as far as what I'm showing y'all, but we just treated lambs, castrated lambs yesterday. So if you see some kind of laying back, it's why. But you can see the three strand fence as I step over it. This is what they were in yesterday. So, or just a few minutes ago, as it were. And it looked just like what I just showed you. Other than maybe there's a little more dead grass and thatch in here. We talked last week about, it looks like they ate a lot of it but they really didn't it just kind of walked down um and i find that this time of year the grass is a little more resilient and it's not as tall a stem i guess is the thing and so when they trample it it comes right back where early in the spring when it gets up and almost into seed it tends to crunch over i think the stems especially on the long stems get hollow and we put that high density on it too it's a lot of footprints and acts sort of like a crimper roller i apologize if i'm giving some of you guys blair witch project video here but just wanted to show what we have going down the hill and i'm just about to cross into what was the day before i've already taken the fence down moved it on up the hill to leapfrog for tomorrow's move but as we walk down you kind of see that grass is rebounding coming back up yeah it's still got some of the walked kind of look to it so this would be three days ago or really 48 hours ago but i was looking you can already kind of see the fescue here kind of rebounding and coming back starting to grow if i had more of this field which i didn't because this is where i just started into this field i could show you where it's already starting to grow back and actually i think that kind of shows it right there <clears throat> there's some stems or some leaves are starting to grow back so this is kind of the idea here we trampled this um, what I'm finding is that the sheep and goats and stalker steers are better tramplers than the cows. I don't have to have as high a density to trample a lot of forage with them. And left a lot of cover on the ground. Another thing about this area, the one I was just in, is um, this field here was polluted with horse nettle just a year ago and two years ago this year we trampled forage on it i don't know if that's why i didn't do anything else to it other than that and we don't have any horse nettle now it's been a drier year the last two years were wet maybe that's it too but just a little side thought here maybe we're, we get worried about some of these weeds and they're only a result of both our management and our weather pattern so Maybe we ought to take that into account. Maybe this trample forage is making a difference. But I guess the other thought that I had as I walked back up, I'm waiting on a water trough to fill, so 
killing time. Got plenty of things to do. I need to go uh, clip some fields tonight. Got some patches of thistle I want to take care of, but um, I guess one of the thoughts I've had I'm kind of working on here is you know, we say recovery day every time of 30 days, and we talk about grazing things to four inches and leaving it go to eight inches, and we put a whole lot of math and a whole lot of thought and a whole lot of time in what we're doing. But in all reality, things are a lot simpler than that, and I guess I got this idea from Ian Mitchell Ennis, but uh, he talks about just split up your fine. I hope I, I pronounce his name right. Ian, I'm a big fan. If I pronounce your name wrong, I'm sorry. But he says, you know, it's as simple as figure a 45 or a 60 day rest, which is what we'd be considering if we were really dry. Split your farm up into that many pastures, move them once a day, twice a day, whatever that number takes, and just let them re graze. Those fields, we don't need all the fancy math. And y'all know me, I know the math, I know the numbers inside and out. Can do them in my head. But maybe we put too much thought and emphasis in the numbers. And as I've said before, this trampled gray stuff is really hard to measure. It's really hard to figure what is here before and after. But there's a whole lot of forage here, and they're not taking a whole lot. And maybe it's just that simple. We just keep rotating them. I guess the other thought for today is it was really dry here for almost five weeks. Really hot here for five weeks. And that is starting to catch up to us. Uh, we had enough grass ahead of us to graze completely through that. But here in about a week and a half, I'm going to be in trouble uh, as far as forage growth because I just don't have it. And I think we'll get through. We'll be fine. It's just going to be tight there for a little while until the the sorghum sedan catches up and the bull goes in with the cows. And most of these stalker steers will go in with the cows, all but the heifers. And as, uh, what I'm saying is I'll pull the heifers out of the cow herd, bring them here, put this group back with the cows because we'll have the sorghum sedan to graze. But we're running short here on forage and uh maybe it's as simple as the rotation i was talking about splitting your farm up into 60 or 120 paddocks and rotating through and and then realizing those first two or three paddocks near the corral where we might like to feed hay that hey we we're not getting we're not getting enough there's not enough we're grazing too much and maybe then it's as simple as pulling out the number of animals that you need to pull out either calling them or moving them to hay and rotating on with the group that that you have in these dry times for me it would be pull the cows feed them some hay keep the stalker steers out on pasture <clears throat> and keep the things that are growing and grazing going uh, we say you never want to feed your way out of a drought and that's true but um, I, we got rain coming now it's going to come back we're going to get growth so we we just need to make sure that we have the cows fed the sheep fed in the next couple of weeks as it's we're, we're catching up to that forage that didn't grow when it was supposed to so i don't know just some thoughts of what's going on out in the field and what we're seeing i know that most of you weren't as dry as we were all of you were as hot as we were and i think that's the bigger factor then the moisture it was the temperature these cool season grasses just don't grow over 90 degrees and i would imagine most all of you are in my same boat i'm allergic to feeding hay but it, we just might have to here in the next coming days weeks maybe a month i don't think it'll be a month but uh just to get through and to make sure we have enough forage growth to go through in the winter i think with everything that we've got and the residue we have it'll pay us back dividends in the fall we just need to get through these next couple of weeks so anyway just some thoughts about grazing and i mean i'm i'm more than happy to say i'm one for the numbers and figuring out the numbers of grazing and all that stuff but really sometimes we just make it too complicated we got a way too much forage in the spring we need to trample that feed it back to the soil 
feed it back to the soil microbes and the biology, let it reproduce in the form of organic matter and water retention to grow more forage later on in the summer if we have our typical dry hot summer and then hopefully just rotate these animals through just take a few inches of it don't take it all don't bear the ground in any way um, and let it come back and let it go and hopefully we'll still have some more to graze in the fall and winter it's all new to me i guess every day is a new day when it comes to grazing we all we're always learning if i'm not learning i'm not having fun so i had a thought tonight that i thought bared repeating and needed to be put in a video uh the harsh reality has come home to roost here uh this is sun saturday going into sunday on this paddock we've got until they're back around to this paddock and that will be next friday saturday and then we're done uh, the one above it is the one I shot the video the other day. They were just there a week ago. The one you can see out there where the water tank is. They were there two or three weeks ago, but almost zero growth. And, uh, it really is a hard pill to swallow, but we're gonna have to feed some hay. But I estimate it'll only be about two weeks at the most. Got some rain coming Tuesday, Wednesday. Things growing really good. Just it's not back to where it needs to be to to be able to run the animals back through. And I guess the thought that I had that needed to be repeated was, you know, we've got some forage. If you look at the grass, there there's some grass there. There's some green stuff there. If we walk over here into the field that I shot the other day, uh, about a week ago, yeah, there's some growth. There's some grass. Some of you are saying, well, why don't you just run them back through there? Well, here's the problem. If I run them back through those pastures, I may get another two weeks of forage. And then I'll have to wait 45 days probably for it to catch up. If it ever catches up by November. This is around the middle of August. 45 days puts me first to October. I don't even know that it would recover at that point. So I can either run them back through, get two weeks on what we have, and then have to feed hay anyway. Or I can bite the bullet, feed some hay now for two weeks, pray for rain, hope this rain comes Tuesday, Wednesday, and the next week. Jefferson County Fair is the week after, such as it is. We're going to get some rain that week. We always do. And then we'll have some growth again to be able to graze. And as much as it really hurts to want to feed some hay, we have to remember uh, second hottest July on record for all of us. And we are in a moderate drought area here, here in this part of the world. I would say that the forecast or the measurements wrong because this ridge from Caddis almost to the river didn't receive a lot of the rains that they said we did. So there's no shame on what we're doing and, and having to feed some hay. It It's a hard pill to swallow, as I said. But there's there's no shame in it being the conditions that we've had. Hottest July, second hottest July on record. Almost no rainfall. Um, I guess... That's what we plan for, and that's why we do it. What makes it harder for me is I've got five acres out of production growing switchgrass right now. Uh, we lost the rented farm, so we don't have as much hay as we normally do. I'm scratching for hay all over the place. But it just makes sense. It's hard to, to figure. It's hard to think about feeding hay when there's something green out here and growing. But I, I've been here before, and I know that if I run them back through, and I ruin it probably for the rest of the season, or effectively for the rest of the season. Why do I think two weeks is it? Well, because I can take these stalker steers and move them away and put them with the cows. Feed everybody two weeks of hay, sheep and cows. My sorghum sedan is about eight inches tall in places, some places taller than that. In two to four weeks, we'll have sorghum sedan to graze with the cows. 
when the sorghum sedan comes, the whole farm opens up for the sheep. So um, I guess we planned for it. I just hoped it was going to work out a little better than 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 we are going to get it to work out. But the take home thought here is feed hay now for two weeks, let everything catch up, or don't feed hay, graze the remainder, which is effectively two weeks, and then have to feed hay for 45 days. I ain't too smart, but I'm pretty good at math, and it just makes sense. Pull them in, feed some hay, wait for a better time. Hopefully we'll have forage to graze in the fall that way and be able to go on. Well, that's a wrap for this week's update. We'll end, as always, by thanking our sponsors. And I uh, hope I've given you all a little insight into what I'm doing here in our operation and uh, kind of the conditions that we're faced with here and maybe gave you some time to think about uh, what you're going to do here in the future as things just keep going in this extreme heat and we're all needing the rainfall that we don't seem to be getting. There's always rain out in the five and 10 day and it always seems to evaporate by the time it gets to the current day. So uh, I'll just remind you all that this is what we planned for. Uh, I, I would say that one of the many benefits of management intensive grazing is we know when we don't have enough forage. We know when we need to supplement. And uh, I drive by continuous grazing operations all the time. They probably should have been supplementing hay weeks ago, and they're still not. And they won't know until those their livestock start losing condition that they need to start supplementing. And by then, it's a little too late. So at least we do know that it's time to supplement. It's time to give them something, and, and this is what we plan for. So um, like I said, hope it gives you all uh, some insight and, and some time to think and reflect on uh, what conditions we're seeing out there and, and what we need to do to remedy the conditions that we've got. So with that, I'll say, see you next time.